Now we'll move on to discuss the different brain regions. Shown here in this lateral view image is the cerebrum, the diencephalon, the mesencephalon, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. The major brain regions are, number one, the cerebrum, number two, the diencephalon, number three, the mesencephalon, number four, the pons, number five, the cerebellum, and number six, the medulla oblongata. The cerebrum is the most anterior and superior region of the brain, including the frontal lobes. The cerebral cortex is the outer layer of the brain, approximately 2 to 4 millimeters thick. This folds into sulci and surrounds the cerebrum. The diencephalon and the mesencephalon. The diencephalon has three major divisions, the epithalamus, the thalamus, and the floor of the diencephalon. The epithalamus contains the pineal gland. The thalamus are on either side and they function as sensory processing areas. In the floor of the diencephalon, the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland are present. The hypothalamus functions as a visceral control center. The hypothalamus is involved in emotions, hormone production, and autonomic nervous system function. The mesencephalon is also known as the midbrain. This processes visual and auditory information. Immediately inferior to the mesencephalon is the pons. The pons is a bridge connecting the cerebellum to the brainstem. The cerebellum is a signal integration center. The cerebral motor cortex projects neurons to this region in order to facilitate the organization of sensory information with motor control. The medulla oblongata connects the brain to the spinal cord. It contains key centers that coordinate heart rate, blood pressure, and digestive functions. The following is a clinical note on traumatic brain injury. Traumatic brain injury, or TBI, occurs as a result of an external force that damages the brain, and this can either be directly against the skull and neck, or an acceleration injury, such as whiplash from a car accident. In the United States, there's approximately 1.5 million cases of traumatic brain injury per year. And these injuries can be accompanied with a loss of consciousness at the time of the injury or a concussion. And this can cause loss of memory and delayed loss of consciousness. TBI can be classified as mild, moderate, and severe. One of the tools used to assess a patient with a traumatic brain injury is the Glasgow Coma Scale, and this scores the patient's level of responsiveness and consciousness. Traumatic brain injury is typically caused by falls and accidents, and its treatment includes alleviating an increase in intracranial pressure if that's present, and surgery if necessary long-term therapy to regain full use of limbs and speech if required. The brain contains gray matter and white matter. The white matter contains neurons and neuron cell bodies, whereas the gray matter is composed mostly of bundles of myelinated axons. The gray matter of the brain makes up the higher brain centers for processing incoming neuronal information. These form specific nuclei in the brain and processing centers. The information processed in these centers is delivered through the white matter tracts in the spinal cord. Deep within the brain are the ventricles. These contain CSF or cerebral spinal fluid. There are four ventricles in total, one within each cerebral hemisphere, a third ventricle in a diencephalon, and the fourth ventricle between the pons and the cerebellum. The ventricles are filled with CSF, which circulates from the fourth ventricle into the subarachnoid space and the rest of the central nervous system. Near the surface of the brain are the protective coverings. The human brain is protected by a number of coverings and brain-specific features. They are depicted here in this cross-section of the human skull. The protective coverings are, number one, the bones of the skull. 
Next, the cranial meninges. The third is the cerebral spinal fluid, and the fourth is an interior barrier, the blood-brain barrier. The meninges are made up of three layers, dura matter, arachnoid matter, and the pia matter. These layers offer protection as well as being the passageway for blood vessels into the area. Let's discuss the meningeal coverings in more detail. The outermost covering is the dura matter. This is a tough, fibrous covering which is made up of dense, irregular connective tissue. The dura matter contains the cerebral spinal fluid within the central nervous system. The dura matter is attached to the skull and the first and second cervical vertebrae, as well as the posterior longitudinal ligament. The arachnoid matter is located between the outer dura matter and the inner pia matter. Between the arachnoid matter and the pia matter is the arachnoid space in which the cerebral spinal fluid is contained. The pia matter is the delicate innermost layer protecting the brain. Within the elastic and collagen fibers of the pia matter is the blood supply that supports the large cerebral vessels. As mentioned, the cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF, is in the subarachnoid space. This functions to separate the brain tissue from the surrounding bones of the skull. It cushions the brain from movement and forces applied to the skull. It also functions to transport nutrients, chemical messengers, and oxygen to different regions of the brain. Within each ventricle is a choroid plexus. This is a combination of specialized ependymal cells and highly permeable capillaries. The ependymal cells use both active and passive transport to produce and secrete cerebral spinal fluid into the ventricular system of the brain. CSF is produced at a rate of approximately 500 mL per day. The flow of CSF is as follows. From the aqueduct of the midbrain, then through the lateral apertures into the subarachnoid space. A major protective barrier for the brain is called the blood-brain barrier. The spaces between the endothelial cells that line the capillaries throughout the body allow for drugs to pass between the cells and enter the tissue. In the brain, however, the capillaries are lined with tightly packed endothelial cells and a layer of glial cells. These make up the blood-brain barrier. This protective barrier allows the entry of small hydrophobic molecules such as oxygen and carbon dioxide, but it's very selective for drugs and it prevents them from passing into the brain. This barrier is decreased or reduced in a few key locations in the brain. Portions of the hypothalamus, the capillaries of the pineal gland, and the membranous roof of both the third and fourth ventricles. This image depicts the major branches of the blood supply to the brain. This image is an inferior view. And starting at the posterior end, you can see the basilary artery. The cerebral arterial circle, or the circle of Willis, is made up of the anterior communicating, posterior communicating, and posterior cerebral. There is also the anterior cerebral artery. These give rise to smaller vessels which supply the brain tissue. The brain has a very high demand for nutrients such as glucose and for oxygen. This is delivered through the blood circulation. The blood supply for the brain is brought into the brain through the internal carotid arteries and the vertebral arteries. Because of the highly vascular nature of brain tissue, a head injury can lead to extensive bleeding into the brain tissue and a dangerous increase in intracranial pressure. An interruption in the blood supply to a particular brain region can be caused by a cerebrovascular accident or stroke. 